created a monster. Or maybe it's a spice rack. I don't really know. Welcome to this episode of Home Built Workshop. Welcome to the shop. My name is Jeff. Today we're going to take an idea from a previous video where I made a drawer organizer using some 3D printed brackets and we're going to expand upon that, I think. Maybe it's going to make a mess, but we're going to attempt to use that same idea to build something that resembles the spice rack. So for this project, I've created a whole other monster of 3D printed brackets. These are a little bit larger in some different shapes that are gonna allow us to take basically that drawer organizer and be able to stand it up and connect the pieces that way so that we can have tiers for the shelves. These brackets are designed to use the same quarter inch stock as the drawer organizer, but it's gonna be two and a half inches wide. That way we have a nice wide shelf to put whatever you're gonna put on it. In my case, the intention is to be able to use this as a spice rack. At least that's the plan. I've got these made up for T shapes and L shapes and corners. We're gonna be able to build off of both dimensions so that we can build up our tiers of our shelf and going in different directions too to fit, in my case, inside of a cabinet. This set of brackets took a little bit of time to get printed. I've got several here where I was prototyping them and parts were breaking off so I had to go back and keep modifying the design until I came up with a design that was pretty solid. Speaking of printing time, a lot of the time spent at the beginning of this project was me dealing with some issues that I was having with the 3D printer. Turns out it really wasn't with the printer at all. It was with the roll of filament. I recently ordered this tan filament from Matter Hackers, which I've had excellent experience with their material, but the material on this roll was stuck and the printer couldn't pull it through, so therefore it couldn't feed the material and the printer didn't know that, so it just kept printing and I lost quite a few prints because the material was stuck on there. It took me a little bit of time to figure out really what was going on, that it wasn't the printer, it was the roll of material. So I contacted Matter Hackers and I just let them know that the roll was sticking on there. And really, they offered up a replacement right away. Super service, I gotta give those guys a shout out. This is not sponsored at all by them, but it's those little things when you get service like that from a company that makes me always wanna go back to that company. So. Thanks a lot, guys. I really appreciate you guys taking care of this issue. I wasn't even complaining to them or anything. I just wanted to let them know that the roll was sticking on there and uh, they offered up a replacement and took care of it right away. Bam, that's customer service right there. That's how you guys do it. I've got my stock already prepared, quarter inch thick, two and a half inches wide. Let's start cutting this into a bunch of small pieces. This process is gonna be very similar to that of the drawer organizer. I've taken some baseline measurements of the cabinet that I want this shelf to fit in, and I'm gonna use those measurements to make my first few cuts. Then I'll do a little bit of assembly so that I can check my measurements and make my next cuts based on the measurements. This will account for any sort of variations. I can make adjustments on the fly and adjust the size of my cuts. After double checking some measurements and making a bunch more cuts, I can finally finish the trial assembly. While you guys are watching me put all these bits and pieces together, I wanted to take a second and let you guys know that I know that this is not a super in-depth project with a bunch of hand cut joinery or anything like that, but that's not what this is intended to be. I'm still very new to designing a project on the computer as opposed to just cutting it out in the shop. So each time I do a project like this, it's a learning process for me. And I wanted to bring you guys along on part of that learning process. Every single time I sit down at the modeling software and I work on designing a new part, I learn something new, a new feature of the software, a new way to design something that makes it more adjustable, something I'm 
always learning something, so I try to look for other opportunities where I can learn some new things. By being able to design a bracket or a template or a jig of some sort, that's how I see 3D printing being used mostly in my shop. Not so much for the trinkets and the figurines, not that there's anything wrong with those, we've definitely made a few of them as well, but I see it as just another tool to be able to get to the end result that you want. I'm well aware that some people feel that using a technology like a 3D printer or a CNC machine is somehow cheating that you just turn on the machine and you hit the button and the work is done. It's not exactly how it works. There's a lot more that has to go into the design before you can even start that machine up. There's a whole new set of skills that you need to learn. This is just one little step in my overall learning process and I wanna bring you guys along for the ride in hopes to inspire you of maybe new ways to think about technologies like this. How can you integrate 3D printing or a CNC machine or some other digital manufacturing machine into your workshop? As far as I'm concerned, the 3D printer is just another tool in the workshop. It's no different than the bandsaw or the drill press or the table saw. It's just one way to make a part to make your project come out the way you want it. So that's really my main goal with this video, just to help show you guys maybe another way to use technology like this to get things done in your shop. Well, there's our monstrosity of a spice rack or whatever kind of shelf you intend it to be for. I'm gonna put spices on here. I've got it sized for different spice containers, some tall ones in the back and a bunch of shorter ones here. We're gonna try this out, see how it's gonna work. Is it perfect? I don't know. I think there's probably some room for improvement, but I gotta try this thing out to see where I might need to make some changes. I'm not sure about the little ledge created by the bracket and the wooden piece. I don't know if it's gonna cause anything to tip or not, but time will tell as we put this thing to the test. If you guys wanna play around with this idea and try something for yourself, I'm gonna put the link to these STL files for these brackets down in the description. You'll be able to download them off of my website and just try them out. See how they work out. Feel free to make any modifications to it to suit your needs. Have fun with it. Experiment a little. <laughs> Thanks a lot for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Have fun playing around with this idea if you want to try printing your own, or I hope this inspires you, maybe gets the ball rolling for an idea that you might be able to do with your 3D printer. Have fun with it, guys, and we'll see you next time.